Welcome back home glitches. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about Polypop, all the fun features that it currently has of, as of the recording of the video, um, unique stuff like its 3D features, as long as some fun stuff that you might be familiar with, um, queuing up commands, alerts, and things like that. It's actually got quite a bit of stuff going for it. Let's talk about Polypop in the video. Let's get started. Welcome back to my YouTube. If you haven't done so already, help me out and smash all my socials. I'd really appreciate it. I don't want to take too much time along from the uh, away from the intro, but Symmetry Inc. has been working on this for a little bit now, and I'll link some stuff um, as like the Polypop Live YouTube and things like that where I first originally figured out about it, and uh, so you can get some extra support. We're going to cover some of its basic features and some of its fun stuff, so that way you can kind of get an idea if this is a program you're going to want to add to your stream. I think it's got some really great unique 3D effects and some unique unique ideas behind it. Let's jump right into some of its features and I'll show you what we're talking about. Okay, let's talk about Polypop. When you first get this guy installed, this is gonna be kind of what it looks like. Oh, should be what it looks like. Uh, bear in mind now, uh, this is still in beta. I'm using build um, 0.98, sorry, build 206, which is version 0 0.98. So I know there's a lot of things down the pipeline for Polypop things getting added and moved around things like that so just bear in mind that this is what I'm using at the time of the recording um, the first thing you want to see is this little tutorial up here and I've already done this but pretty much what we're going to be covering today uh, feature wise is going to be kind of overviewed in this tutorial so highly recommend going in there and doing it, it takes about 10 minutes it's going to show you a lot of the overlay and how things work so if I skip over some stuff and you're confused go in there and do that and you'll you'll kind of know what I'm talking about um, there is some preferences and setup that you can do um, for the system, um, you know, effects quality, analyzing, um, output. I'm um, just going to stay with the 720, um, connected accounts, and stuff like that, right up in there. That's kind of like where your option are, uh, options are. Um, starting points are going to be right up here. These are basically templates, um, past sessions for me, um, some basic stuff, some tutorials are going to be in there, and some themes. Um, so, quite a few things that are already built in. Um, scene selection is going to be right up here. I already have one, just have one scene populated. Scene layout is going to be over here. If you want to add new items into the scene from your, your properties, your library, you can do it also right over here. Um, I have microphone sound selected, and now here where I can actually modify what I have selected. Um, go lives, V cams, stuff is in the bottom. Um, and then down here on the open library, this is where you can add assets. Um, you won't see this originally in the beginning. I have NDI running. Um, the reason why I did that already is because NDI takes just a second to populate, so I didn't want you to wait for me to do that. But basically what I want to do to start with is make some sort of backdrop, and then we'll get into some of the fun things like 3DX, uh, 3D effects and things like that after I make my backdrop. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get some sort of backdrop for your scene. Um, it could be a game, it could be your desktop, whatever. In order to do that, you can hit plus, um, import what you need. Uh, most likely it's going to be an app or a screen capture. Um, in this case, I'm using the NDI source. I already have OPS running on my gaming computer and uh, Polypop already picks up NDI without any extra, so it's really kind of cool. Um, and then after you would do whatever you need to do to pick it up, it's going to show up in this, this bar over here and then you can just drag and drop it into the scene and it will populate. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click into the scene and then I'm just going to size this so it's a little bit bigger. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and bring in a webcam. And you can see also in the library that it's already picking up my microphone, my desktop audio. Um, right now, as of the build, there's no filters for the microphone, so just bear that in mind. Um, so, you know, things that are... I'm using a different device to record, but as far as streaming goes, um, you might want to run it through a program first and then shoot it over. Um, just give you that in mind, at least at the time of this build. Um, Let's go ahead and add in a webcam. I'm going to hit plus over here. I'm going to bring down webcam. Um, should detect mine already. Hi, I'm down here in the bottom. My green screen all weird. It starts us uh, a little slow, but that's just my webcam. That's not really the program. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drop the resolution down to, um, a little bit. Um, and then you could have different webcams and things you can pick from over here. 
formats, FPSs, all that kind of stuff. And then you'll see it also in your list. So in this case, I'm just going to pop it in there into the middle of the scene. I will probably move this around and play with it a little bit more, but this works for now. And yeah, you can see me with my green screen. I feel, I feel naked. Woo. Um, uh, probably would have to adjust the crop in order to do that. Um, if you hit plus on the item, you can go to crops and filters. Um, you can crop this to something that's a little bit more appropriate over here. And then if you want to add any sort of filters, like a chroma key things, you'd put that side plus, and then you have some built-in filters that are in the system here, including something like a chroma key. Um, I'm not going to worry about my chroma key right now. I'm happy kind of with what it is for, for the moment, for the purposes of this. You can see it didn't do any sort of changes, and that's because that's still the original asset over here. The crop and filter got populated um, down below that. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. I'm going to need to delete this. I'm going to go back to my library, and I'm just going to drop in the one that's the crop. And I'm just going to leave myself down here, I guess, for the moment. And let's start playing with some 3D effects things like that. So uh, over here on the right, if you hit the plus, you're going to see some of the things that are built into the system. Everything from 2D patterns, 2D stuff, uh, 3D stuff, um, a, lot, a few things like text and emitters and things like that. Objects that are built in. And the cool thing about this program too is if you do have pre-built um, 3D models and stuff, like from Maya or Max or whatever you used, you can import them in. Um, and some pre-built games, hotkeys, which I believe are like emitters and stuff, uh, some of the filters that are built in, and some of the Twitch like templates, basically. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and play with the 3D breakable box. I'm going to add this into the scene. You'll see a box. It's kind of hard to see because it's um, transparent. Highlight that. I'm going to go over to the right. I'm going to actually make it more opaque. I'm going to take the opacity and bring it up a little bit. You can see the box is now a little bit more solid. And this is um, Polypop's breakable box, which if I hit explode over here, um, it will actually break apart in, into many little pieces. Um, and there's currently no texture on the box. So what we can do is go into our library. We can add in a new piece of texture, um, or you can go down here and you can use the pick function to do so if you already have it populated. But what I'm gonna do is just gonna actually use my webcam in this case and drag it onto the box. And now you can see that I'm on the box. And so when I hit the little explode, you get many types of um, boxes. All right, the next thing I want to show you is some of the um, uh, triggers and things. So what I'm going to do into the left side of things, I'm going to hit plus. I'm going to add my Twitch alerts down here at the bottom. And you can see that it is currently disconnected. I can connect my account by clicking over here. And basically, you have to sign in and authorize um, your Twitch account, so it's allowed to use it. Now, Pop Pop is authorized, um, and you should see that it is connected now. And so now I get a whole list of things that trigger based on Twitch actions. Things like new follows coming in, my stats, raids, bits, that kind of stuff. Um, and they are connected through these nodes. So we're going to play with these nodes to make things happen. Um, I deleted just a second ago that breakable box. Um, because it was being a little bit of a butt, but we're going to go ahead and bring in another breakable box and just add that back in again. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll play with the breakable box. Go ahead and add that chroma uh, back in it so it should explode, reset. Okay, well, it wasn't resetting before. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and go down and underneath the physics. Uh, what do I want to do? I'm just going to make it float for now. And so now it's kind of floating in space. It won't really see it move too much until it like starts at interacting and doing things. Um, but you can see now when I when I hit the explode or whatever, um, the, the boxes kind of like float around and, and, and do things a little bit different. And I'll reset it and now it kind of like is affected by its gravity and things like that. And what I'm gonna do is, is um, when a new follow comes in, I want this thing to explode. So that's what these nodes are here for. So you can basically pull on underneath new follow uh, this node. I'm going to pull a rope out and I can set it to anything that has a node. Uh, scene selections, all that kind of stuff. It's all set up over here and I'm just going to set it to explode. So when a new follow comes in, I'm just going to test button over here. It will explode. 
and that will basically set up that trigger. I'll just reset this real fast. But that doesn't really work out so far for us. Um, let's hook up a hotkey to this reset. So underneath the um, uh, library, I'm going to hit plus. We're going to hit hotkey. And then I can assign whatever hotkey I'm going to have. We'll just say R for reset. And then on press, we're going to just drag this guy over and we're going to connect to the reset node. So if I'm underneath my Twitch alerts, um, I can basically test the new follow. Another new follow. And you can see that it's telling me that, you know, this is the follow, this is the person. And then um, I can hit R for reset. And that's a little bit closer to what we can kind of make feasible for a stream. Um, but not necessarily exactly what we need. So on the explode, I'm going to go ahead and just disconnect the rope. Um, I'm going to show you briefly what um, uh, action sequences are. So instead of just dragging this new rope here from new follow to the explode like we had, I'm going to actually go up to the top where action sequences are. And this is basically items in a sequence. So if I hit plus, we can hit a new alert and I can attach it to wherever I want. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and do the explode again. I'm going to hit plus. We're going to wait for some time frame. We'll hit plus. One minute alert. We'll explode. We'll hit plus. We'll wait for a second or whatever time frame makes sense to you. We'll hit plus. One minute alert. And this is just basically chaining events in a sequence. Um, so this is one way to do it on there. I guess there's a couple different ways, but um, this works out for me. So explode, explode, explode. And then we'll reset. We'll go ahead and close this. It's still active, even though it's not showing. And now, when I test my new follow, go ahead and make this full screen. It will explode. Wait a few seconds. Explode again, and just explode again, and eventually just resets itself. So now we're kind of um, getting things a little bit set up to make a little bit more sense for us. Let's go ahead and play with text real fast. So. On the right, I'm going to hit plus. We're going to bring in the, we'll do the split flap text. We'll add this into the scene. You can see we've got this 3D, it has casting a shadow, um, this cool little text box thing. And we're going to use this for like our subscriber alert. So I'll hit plus on the character line. We'll go ahead and make it a couple character lines. And then on the bottom, you hear you have transform. I'm going to change the scale down a little bit. And I'll make it two lines deep, two lines, and I'll make it sizable for what you need. And very similar to what we did with the follower, we're going to do this on subscription. And so when a new subscriber comes in, I'm going to drag it over to the text box. And then when this happens, you get a new line that appears. It says set to text. Um, and then you have these properties, username, um, streak months, things like that. Um, cumulative months. I'm not too worried about that, so I'm going to delete the cumulative months. And then it will say, let's go ahead and put in our own text. I'll say thank you, uh, user. And then for strict months, this is how many months in a row. And then I'll say months. And then like exclamation mark or something like that. And let's do one more thing while we're here. Let's make it a little bit funner. We could do an emitter. I'll probably cover that in a different video. Um, let's go ahead and do a different camera, I guess. So we'll hit plus on the camera, or plus on uh, the library. Go to 3D objects. I'm just gonna scroll down and I'm gonna grab one of these um, screens. Add that to the screen, uh, scene. Will ask me what, um, texture I want to use. Uh, I'm going to use my webcam and I suppose I could delete the box. So let's delete the box. Get that out of the way. Let's go ahead and delete my old camera, current camera. And now I have this teeny little camera. So I'm going to select that and then underneath the um, transform highlight this uh, camera. That one right there. And then I should be able to hit the transform and change the scale. And bring this up a little bit bigger. Okay, something will look like that. It's really hard to tell that that's actually 3D because it's casting the shadow directly. So let's change the rotation a little bit. And maybe this way. And so you can see it's casting the shadow and it's actually true 3D, which is kind of cool. 
we're going to go ahead and do mods and I'm going to bring in, you can do moves, you can do all these fun things, you can add physics, make it float. Um, I'm going to do the spin action, which will spin and then reset its position. And um, so we can go ahead and test that if you want right here with spin. And that's kind of what it will do. So you can see it's true 3D. I don't know why it's drawn this line across. So I don't know if that's supposed to be the way it is or whatever, but I get this line drawn across. So I'm not quite sure what that's about. And so now we can do underneath Twitch alerts, underneath subscription. We already have the text set up. We're gonna just go ahead and drag it and pop it into that spin action. We'll uh, go ahead and test a new subscriber and see what it does. So looks like it's updating the name. I don't have enough character space. So let's add on that text. Let's go ahead and add a third line. And then we'll test it again. So my webcam spins and it says, thank you user for eight months. So in, in, in an ideal world with an, um, with the action sequence, I would have this change the visibility first, pop off from off screen, something like that. And then, you know, come into the scene. So it's not just floating the whole entire time in front of me. Um, and then like my character would spin and things like that. So that's kind of how that's done. Um, let's do one uh, more thing. Let's go ahead and connect this to OBS Studio. So as long as you have something running in the scene, which I currently do, um, you know, maybe I'll del delete the NDI source or something like that and because I just really need my webcam and my alert. I don't know, whatever you want to do for it. Um, you can go ahead and jump into OBS Studio. So I'm running it in the background. Um, I'll go ahead and create a new scene and you can call it whatever you want. I'll say poly and then um, we'll hit plus and we can go ahead and bring in a video capture and again you can call it whatever you want. We're going to go ahead and detect the polypop virtual camera and then ideally I think you want to change your color range. It's recommended um, da -da 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 -da. looks like everything's right in there. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, that's right. Somebody was saying change it to RBG, but let's works fine for me. And then you can see I'm broadcasting 720. So in this case, I would change the sizing. Now I already have everything populated for me in OBS studio. So for me, I'm just probably going to use this thing as a maybe a uh, overlay for it and then I already have a game and things back there. So that's how you can bring it into OBS Studio. Okay, that's gonna be pretty much everything for our video today. I just really wanted to showcase some of the features that Polypop offers. Um, this looks like it's gonna be a great tool, a little bit of everything all in one and some unique stuff. 3D environment is like nobody else does it. So um, yeah, check it out. I think it's really great. Everything is gonna be in the description for the videos. I appreciate you watching. See you on the next one.